Hey guys, we're up here in northern Minnesota, clear water, fishing around the reeds, up shallow, catching largemouth, maybe a few smallmouth on the stealth blade. Stay tuned. him the stealth blade strikes we're up here in, in Minnesota crystal clear water you know you see seven or eight feet in that stealth blade I have it cut down with a baby goats trailer really an awesome bait in that clear water they'll bite that a lot better than a, a full-size chatterbait a lot of times you get these really clear water conditions it's almost halfway between a swim jig and a chatterbait awesome bait for these northern largemouth and I think we're gonna catch some smallmouth on it too for all you guys that aren't familiar with the Stealth Blade, it's a spin from the Jackhammer, which everybody knows how successful that is. It's just a different version, so essentially the same head, but it's got a clear plastic blade on it with a split ring through the blade. So you're actually gonna tie to the front of it so the water's gonna push off the blade there and cause a really tight vibration. It's a more subtle version of the Jackhammer. It's still the uh, wire tied skirt, so that skirt's gonna hold together, together for you, but it's a four-aught decoy hook with a coating on it, super smooth, really sharp hook. But it's just a, a more compact, subtle version of the jackhammer, but a lot of the same attributes. You know, I like a lot of different trailers on it, but generally something smaller is good on this bait. I'll throw uh, like a little streaks, the baby goats, a three inch slim swim. I like a smaller trailer. It's just a more subtle bait. Works in situations where the water's really clear, cold water, it really excels there too. Let's get back after it, see if we can catch another one. We're fishing these reeds like this, the wind blowing. It's really important to be on the front, the leading side of the wind here to be able to get my casting angles right. I'm looking for places that that water is pushing through little gaps or through those lanes or into these points like this. But to be up in front of it, I'm trying to cast with the wind most of the time. You know, there's definitely times when I get with reeds on both sides of me that I'll cast into the wind some too. And that's really when this DC reel helps me cast into the wind like that. You don't get the backlashes that you have, but I can keep a lot tighter line casting to or from the wind going through these reeds. You know, you get a big bow in your line and it's gonna drag your bait up over the reeds. So really using that and trying to imagine where those fish are sitting, this water, you can see it pushing through the reeds. They're not gonna be in the thickest clumps a lot of times when it's like this, but rather maybe in front of a thick clump or they'll sit in these little lanes or in front of a point where that water's pushing through. There's a lot more bait activity, stuff like that there. So, you know, you gotta really use the wind. advantage. <laughs> Just like that little lane right there. You gotta use that wind to your advantage to be able to cast down these little chutes where that water's pushing through. Just like that, you get bit. Uh, you know, this stealth blade, it's an impressive little bait. It's just, uh, you know, it's something that feels pretty subtle, but so is a swim jig. And this is just a little variation in between a swim jig and a chatterbait, and it gets bites, especially in these clear water situations. Another time it works really good is when the water's really cold. That tight vibration can be crucial when the water's cold in the spring, slow rolling this bait, really tight, a really good little bait here. Uh, we're throwing it on a, a 7.2 medium heavy rod. Anything in that seven foot, low sevens, I like medium heavy, something fairly parabolic. Let those fish load up on the bait. A 7.2 to 1 reel, a little bit faster reel. So you just want to start winding one and gets it, and it'll lock them up inside the mouth just like that one there, and you don't lose any fish. We're going to see if we can get another one. Ugh. Oh, it jumped like three feet out of the water. Not a giant, but another on the stealth blade. That thing's just really subtle in this clear water, and those fish like it. I have the skirt cut down a little bit here, and a baby goat's on the back of it, just because we're around some smallmouth, too. And I like that smaller profile for smallmouth and that tight vibration, but as you can see, these largemouth like it, too. We got some wind blowing into the reeds, pulling the fish out to the front here, so it's a good opportunity to throw a chatterbait when you get 
situations like this pushing into here, those fish want to get on the front edge of that wind because that's where the best opportunity to feed is. So and they like that little stealth blade right there. That's a half ounce green pumpkin. Oh, that was like a nine incher. He escaped me. Well, for some reason, the largemouth like the green pumpkin one, but we're getting a lot of smallmouth to chase it. I think we're gonna make a little change here. We rigged one up earlier, a shad color one with a, this is a four inch in a jerk shad on the back of it. That had a 375, is a good shad imitator, this tight vibrating bait. We're gonna give it a try, see if the smallmouth will bite it. Now we're throwing this shad color stealth blade right now. It's a half ounce. And I put a scented jerk shad on the back of here, and really the reason I like the scented jerk shad, one, it's streamlined, but when I twitch it, it creates, the, causes the bait rather to dart more side to side, and because it's a last tech, it has a lot of action. Any bladed jig, chatter bait, um, that thing has a lot of action on it there compared to any other of those style, minnow style baits. Uh, really a good trail on any of those. Again, I'm uh, throwing it on 15 pound fluorocarbon here. This happens to be Tatsu, uh, Seaguar Tatsu. Uh, there's a lot of guys that like to throw it on 12 pound or even lighter line and really finesse fish it. Uh, in situations where I'm throwing this half ounce in open water, I like to have a little bit less stretch where that 15 pound gets me less stretch if one bites me on the end of a long cast like that. And uh, here I'm throwing a, a 7.2 uh, Zodius right now. It's a medium heavy rod. I throw a G Loomis uh, BC, or BJR883, which is a bladed jig rod. Uh, quite often in open water too. I went to a, a little shorter rod here just because I'm throwing more in these lanes and stuff. It's just a little bit more accurate. Uh, any rod in that 7.2, 7.5, but a medium heavy, a little bit softer rod is a really good bladed jig rod. Just lets the, that blade open up and hooks the fish a lot better. And I, I personally really like a 7.2 to 1 reel. That's the speed. I feel like I hook them a lot better. Um, you get a slower reel and you tend to jerk your rod more where it jerks the bait out of their mouth. Whereas this here, I use the reel a lot when one bites it. They try to get the reel to just load up on that fish to hook them a little bit better. Uh, you know, this happens to be a uh, uh, SLX DC, and the DC is nice here, just cast them into the wind. And we get these areas you're going into the wind. Uh, but, you know, those faster speed reels at seven, two to one is perfect for me. There's some guys that like a little bit faster, a little bit slower. For me, I think it's just a good all around speed reel for any blade of jigs, a stealth blade or a jackhammer, whatever it may be. But, uh, you know, everybody has their own setup for sure, and this is what works for me, but other guys think other things work for them. But what do I got? But it feels like a decent one. Looks like a large mouse. Well, it didn't take a long time. A little nicer one, the old shad color stealth blade. A little bit nicer large mouth. Choked it there on the outside of the reeds. Came out here thinking we were gonna catch a small mouth, going a little more shad color because they were chasing it, but got another large mouth. This is just a, an awesome bait in this clear water, the stealth blade. You know, check it out. If you like this video, share it with your buddies. Uh, this is a, an awesome video of learning how the stealth blade works and the ways to use it and the places to use it. If you like this video, make sure to share it with a buddy. Uh, be sure to get into the gear giveaway and check out the rest of the action from up here in Minnesota, catching largemouth and smallmouth in this clear water and having a lot of fun.